Last week, on Easter Sunday, I spoke about the reality of the resurrection. That is an actual event that took place at a particular time, in a particular place, that it really happened. And that our reaction to this event must be one of complete and utter amazement. And so this week, I want to follow up on that with what that amazement looks like. Right? What should we do in our amazement over the resurrection? What else should we do because we have become witnesses to the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead? In our gospel today, Jesus appears to the apostles, right, which is a common theme in our scriptures following Easter. Right? We hear about it all the time. And unlike the many times that we've heard this past week, uh, the apostles aren't afraid when they see Jesus, right? when he appears to them. Instead, they rejoice when they see him. They rejoice to see the risen Lord. And so we too ought to have that same reaction. Right? We ought to rejoice when we experience, when we see the risen Lord. I'm always struck uh, during the Easter season whenever we pray the preface, right? one of the prayers right before the consecration. There's a line in it that says, Therefore, overcome with paschal joy. Overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. That in this time of Easter, we ought to be overcome with joy at the fact that Christ is risen. And Jesus approaches them in that Easter joy and says, Peace be with you. Because of that joy that they are experiencing, he says, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Overcome by this paschal joy, overcome with amazement at the fact that Christ is risen from the dead, he sends his apostles out to proclaim that good news. And so that's where our amazement should lead us, right? To go out and to proclaim that good news to everyone that we encounter. We're overcome with joy. We're able to be sent as the early Christians were because we are able as Christians to say we have seen the Lord, right? Every one of us have seen the Lord. We've not seen with our bodily eyes, as Thomas wanted to do. We've seen with the eyes of faith. Right? Those eyes of faith that were opened in our baptism. When we go down into the water, our eyes of faith are opened. We're marked, we're sealed by and for Christ. And so we've seen the Lord in our lives. We've seen the Lord in what seemed like a hopeless situation that somehow worked out. We've seen the Lord and the peace that we receive when we're close to Him, right? When we trust in Him, when we hand over our worries. We've seen the Lord and the transformation of others around us. Those who maybe have been wrapped in sin, who seemed like they had no way out, and they come out. We've seen the Lord and the fact that our church has existed for over or around 2,000 years. If we can't see the Lord in that then maybe we are blind, right? Because there's been persecutions, there's been scandals, there's been less than perfect leaders, yet the church continues on. The only answer for that, the only explanation for that, can be that it is Christ guiding it, that it is Christ who holds it together. The interaction between Thomas and Jesus It's interesting, right? It fascinates us. And it's a key to how we ought to go when we are sent. This is what St. John tells us. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. So our role in spreading the gospel 
is to help people to see Jesus. Right? That is our role, to help them see Jesus. Our role is not to fuss at people, at least not right off the bat, right? Sometimes people need to be fussed, sometimes I need to be fussed, but not right off the bat. Right? The rules are important, but they're not what we lead with. The most important thing is for the person to encounter the risen Lord. Right? That was the criteria for choosing the successor of Judas. Right? That he had to be a witness to the resurrection. He had to encounter the risen Lord. And that is what we have to do too. That's what we have to try and help others to do. Because until you and I truly encounter the Lord, the resurrection remains a story. It remains just another thing that my parents told me about that doesn't have any real effect on me. Something distant. Until I truly encounter the risen Lord, I am not going to be convincing to anyone. I am not going to be able to share the good news. And until the other person encounters Christ, my promulgation of rules, of list of things to do and don't do, are going to fall on deaf ears. I read a lot of Pope Benedict's writings and speeches and other things that he gave. And I was amazed in that you couldn't really read anything or listen to anything he said without hearing about this personal encounter with Christ. And in one of his talks, he said this, Being Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or of a lofty idea, but the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction. We have to encounter Christ, and we have to help others to encounter him too. Right? We too say with St. Thomas, unless I see Christ, unless I experience him personally, then I will not believe. Unless I see with the eyes of faith, and truly come to understand and grasp the fact that Christ died for me, that Christ rose for me, that Christ loves me, then it's not going to make a difference. We have to touch Jesus in our prayer. We have to encounter him in the sacraments. We have to encounter him in and through the church in order to truly believe. And so as we continue this Easter season, as we close out the octave today, we ought to reflect on the fact that we too are sent, like the disciples, to proclaim the good news. We are sent because we have seen the Lord. Again, Pope Benedict writes, For each one of you, as for the apostles, the encounter with the divine teacher who calls you friends may be the beginning of an extraordinary adventure. That of becoming apostles among your contemporaries to lead them to live their own experience of friendship with God made man, with God who has made himself my friend. We have to become friends of Christ. And if we have a friend that we love, that we know is amazing, we want to share that friend with everyone, right? We want to show them off. That is what we are called to do, to help others to become the friends of Christ. And so let us pray that we may daily encounter our risen Lord in our prayer, so that our zeal for him might inspire others to encounter him, might inspire others to become the friends of Jesus. Amen.